This week was cold, and of course, I pulled out some new heavy hitters, so stay tuned. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel where I upload weekly fragrance content. So of course you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button down below and also be sure to follow me over on my Instagram page. So just like I said, this week we had a pretty cold week. So I had to pull out some more heavy hitters in my collection and some new stuff as well. So if you are familiar with this series though, we basically run down the fragrance I wore on each day, how many sprays, the kind of weather, and of course if that particular fragrance happened to get any compliments or not. So Let's not waste any time and get right into Sunday. Sunday was in the mid 30s and cloudy outside and I was in the mood for a soapy fragrance. So I went with probably one of the best soapy fragrances, Prada Loam. This literally smells like a luxurious soap bar and nobody does soapy fragrances better than Prada themselves. I was just in a relaxing kind of zen mode and I always reach for this one when I want something that just makes me just kind of feel at peace for some reason. I don't know exactly what it is about it, but it gives off that vibe. Now, on Sunday, I did go six sprays of Prada Loam. This, of course, isn't necessarily the best performer. It is an EDT as well. I never tried Prada Loam Intense. I kind of am curious about that, but I think it was discontinued. And it's pretty expensive to actually get your hands on it now. No compliments with Prada Loam since I wasn't really around anybody besides myself on Sunday, but that's what I chose to wear to just relax. Monday was in the high 30s and cloudy outside, and I decided to go with one of my favorite fragrances in my collection that's not gonna be for everybody. That is Tiziano Terenzi's Urza. So this is actually very similar to By Killian Straight to Heaven. The only difference between the two is this one's less boozy and it also includes the note of oud, so it makes it very earthy and barnyardy. But I have to say, if you are a patchouli lover, this has to be on your radar because it's one of the best patchouli dominant fragrances I've ever had the pleasure of getting my nose on. And knowing me, patchouli is in my top three favorite notes of all time. This is also a fragrance you wanna be cautious on who you're wearing it around. I almost decided to not go with it on that day because I was around quite a few people and I only went with six sprays and that's kind of funny when I say only because you guys probably think even six sprays is too much but lately I have been doing around the 10 spray mark but on that day I definitely did not want to overspray Urza because this can turn very very bad. Also got no compliments on that day either because technically this is not really gonna get you that much attention at least good attention to say the least because it's not a crowd pleaser by any means. It's actually probably the exact opposite. But it's one of my favorites in my collection just because of the patchouli, the dusty dry fruits, and that very earthy oud. It's just absolutely gorgeous combined together. So that's what I chose to wear for Monday is Urza. Tuesday was in the high 40s and rainy outside and I went with a brand new fragrance in my collection and the first time wearing this and it's coming from New Notes. This is Latte de Cherry. Now for all my cherry lovers out there, you absolutely have to check this one out because you will be very impressed with it. And I know cherry has become such a popular note nowadays. A lot of houses are making a cherry fragrance, but this one actually stands out quite a bit. I really enjoyed the wearing experience with Latte de Cherry. It opens up with this very juicy kind of sour cherry along with these bitter almonds. That dries down into a nice kind of creamy, spicy vanilla. And I went with my usual 10 sprays to get a full body wearing experience and see how this one performed. And the performance with this was incredible. It actually kind of surprised me because when you think of cherry fragrances, of course, the main one that comes to mind is Tom Ford's Lost Cherry. Sort of the fragrance that started the entire cherry genre. And that fragrance does not perform the best at all. This one though actually performs very, very good because I did get a compliment from a coworker probably around like eight or nine hours after application of this one. She said, wow, you smell really good. And I said, thank you, does it smell like cherry? She said, yeah, it actually kind of does. So people are still detecting this around almost 10 hours after applying it. So that's very, very good, of course. And these also are extract to parfums, which is nice because you are gonna get that kind of uh, longevity from an extract as you would expect. But yeah, that's what I chose to wear for Tuesday. And I will be reviewing this one very, very soon because more people needed to know about this beauty. Wednesday was in the high 40s and cloudy outside. And I pulled out another brand new fragrance in the collection. It's coming from Les Oaks Primo Dallas. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this is Ombre Super Fluoride. Now, 
This one is absolutely gorgeous and I believe the most iconic from the brand and I can see why because it's beautiful. With this one you get this extremely fresh apple with some cinnamon, honey, tobacco, vanilla and honestly you cannot beat a combination of like that. Plus this one got a ton of attention on Wednesday. I also did my usual 10 sprays with this fragrance and it got a ton of attention. I actually had this coworker like a few feet behind me at the time and she said, hey Hunter, I actually smell your fragrance all the way over here. Like I keep getting whiffs of it. She didn't technically compliment it, just kind of let me know that she smelled it because she said that it doesn't smell the best mixed with my Icy Hot. So apparently she was using Icy Hot and she was smelling it mixed with the Hombre Super Fluoride. But the CLS and projection must have been going crazy with this one. And then I also had another coworker come over to me. She's like, wow, what are you wearing today? Of course, I told her she said it smells great and she asked for the name because she pulled her phone out and started doing research and, and looking this one up and then she found it on the Harrods website. So apparently these are sold at Harrods, which I didn't know. Then yet again, another coworker came over to me and said I smelled really good today. So two compliments with this one. So I guess if you're looking for performance, you're looking for compliments and a cold weather banger, this one is worthy of checking out. Plus this entire house has a ton of bangers because I had a sample set and I tried every single one of them. I believe the Vanille Super Massive is fantastic. Got a decant of that as well as the Oud and Saffron Super Fluoride is great. So this is a house that is absolutely going to want to be on your radar. Thursday was in the high 30s and cloudy and I went with another new fragrance that is claimed by Fragrantica as one of the best niche fragrances of the year and I can see why and it's coming from Plume Impression. This is Royal Bourbon. One of the best boozy fragrances I've smelled in my life to be honest. Really impressed with this one because you get a extremely smooth rum mixed with some earthy tobacco. You also get this kind of a fizzy ginger note as well and it just is beautiful. And a lot of people must have been buying this one because it's actually sold out on So Avant Garde. So. This one might actually be worth the hype that it's been getting. On that day, of course, did my usual 10 spray, which is my go-to routine lately. Did get a compliment from a coworker as well. She came over and said, what are you wearing today? Of course, I told her she said it smells fantastic. And then proceeded to pull her phone out and search this one up. And for the price of the quality of this fragrance, it smells way more expensive than it is. I believe the retail is around like 205 on So Avant Garde. But of course, when you use my code, you already know Frag120, you get 20% off once this one does come back into stock, which should be soon. So that's what I chose for Thursday, is the new Royal Bourbon. Friday was in the low 40s and a cloudy outside, and I pulled out a clone of a barbershop fragrance that I have to pick up now, and it is coming from Dua. This is Invasion of the Barbers. Now, this is actually cloning Invasion Barbera by, I believe, MDCI, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong on that, but that is seriously such a good fougere barbershop style fragrance that is extremely unique at least if it smells like what this clone does because of course you get that spicy lavender but you also get this patchouli that's almost more of like a chocolatey very potent patchouli is what i pick up on and this is one of my favorites from adua and they create such good clones especially for the price and i pulled this fragrance out because i wanted to go with a barbershop style fragrance because on that day i actually did get a haircut as you can see looking good my hair was growing out way too much always wearing a hat and things like that so of course i had to go with something that was a barbershop style and this one was absolutely perfect for that day now i did do six sprays of invasion of the barbers of course when it comes to duos these are very strong they're all extract the parfums as you can see that oil and there is very, very potent. No compliments on that day either, but man, we'll be getting a bottle of Invasion Barbare very soon. Saturday was in the mid 40s and snowy outside, and I went with another new fragrance from New Notes, and this is Erotica Minimal. So, kind of like that name suggests, guys, this is a very alluring, seductive, sexy fragrance. It's this spicy coriander with a hint of cinnamon, but as it dries down, it starts to turn very floral. And I'm mostly picking up that geranium, which is very green and rosy, nuanced, but the dry down is by far the best part with this earthy patchouli and a actual very animalic musk note. Just a very seductive fragrance with erotica minimal. And honestly, New Notes is such a good house because I tried some samples from them, like almost all these samples from the house, and there's so many that I'm gonna have to get a bottle of as well. So very impressed with 
this house altogether. Now, on that day, I did do six sprays of Erotica Minimal. I did get together with some friends in the evening at a restaurant. There was like six of us and the waitress kind of came over as we were like already sat down and whatnot. And she's like, wow, somebody smells really good. And everybody at the table pointed to me, yeah, it's him. He's kind of like a celebrity when it comes to fragrances. And so I was like, oh my gosh, man. And then she's like, no, it kind of smells like a uh, perfume. And of course to the average person, perfume means like a woman smell. And they were all like, yeah, it's still him because this one does, like I said, has that rosy nuance to it. It's very, very rosy and could kind of seem like a women's perfume, even though this one is a unisex. And then the waitress kind of said, wow, what are you wearing then? And of course I had to tell her and I said, yeah, it does smell like roses, don't it? She said, yeah, it kind of does. I kind of thought that was funny that they all put me on a spot like that, but that's what I chose to wear to wrap off the week on Saturday is Erotica Minimal. Highly worth checking this one out as well if you're looking for a seductive, sexy fragrance that will be perfect for like a date night situation. So that's gonna do it for my weekly fragrance rotation. As always, comment down below the fragrance you guys have been wearing throughout the week. You guys always pull out heavy hitters and bangers that I'm always interested to see. Besides that though, leave a like, subscribe below if you haven't already. And of course, I'll see all of you back here in my next upload. Take care, everybody.